Yeah, every time I shave my mustache, it means I'm trying to write new jokes. Because, okay. <laughs> unfortunately... <laughs> That's the process? Yeah, unfortunately, some of my best material is kind of prop comedy. Mm. More or less, it's just I grow the prop out of my face. But, yeah. Yeah, my dad's been doing mustache-based mustache comedy uh, for the last 50 years. <laughs> yeah. He just doesn't know it. Yeah, I'm trying to take it. Yeah. I'm trying to take it from the dads. And there's a young guy, younger comic on the scene. Good, Matt Ross. Shout out Matt Ross. But he grew a mustache now, so he's doing mustache jokes. So I had to pass the torch, oh. pass the stash. Ugh, when people, <laughs> people new burst onto the scene and they take your thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm furious, and it's on site. But good luck with it and enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's on site. R.I.P. Stash. <laughs> yeah, so um, this is episode four of the Problematic Podcast, um, Metal Edition. <coughs> metal Edition! <laughs> and, um, but I'm a B-boy. I'm a B-boy today. I'm a B-boy, and I got a box cut. <laughs> I'm a B-boy, and I got a box no, cut. boxes better start shit, because yep. you'll cut them. That's what the B and B-boy stands for, It's box cutter boy. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and I got my good friend here, my buddy, AJ. AJ from, um, he's a musician, uh, artist, um, there's a lot of things, you know, I creator, so. designer, um, but yeah, he's of the band We're Wolves, uh, dope fucking metal band, hardcore band, what have you, post hard, whatever the fuck is, I could never classify. Every band is multiple yeah, genres yeah. that no one cares to listen it's, to. It's exhausting. I just classify us as metal. Yeah, yeah, that's what I say, metal band, he's a, they're a sick metal band, We're Wolves, um, and, um. They got new album. You just had something new drop. You have something new coming out soon. Uh, we have we haven't announced it yet, but our uh, single is going to be coming out shortly. I'm not allowed to announce it yet because I have a publicist who will yell at me. Okay. Yeah. Shout cause... out to Stephanie. Stephanie is the best. <laughs> She's <laughs> probably gonna watch. Well, yeah. Original track dropping. Yes. Right? Finally. Okay. But yeah. you just dropped a sick fucking cover of Down with the Sickness. You, you got Down with the Sickness. By disturbed. Yep. <laughs> Yep, and you just got shouted out by Disturbed. They I, shared the video or the, the track on Facebook, right? And Instagram? Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Damn, dude. Yeah, I was That's at sick. work and like all of a sudden my pocket just started exploding with cum. That's huge. Yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> phone cum. It had nothing to do with my phone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. My pocket started exploding. Yeah, fuck is I just this? had to go for it. Yeah, that was the last thing yeah. I assumed. And then I looked that. at my phone <laughs> after I cleaned up. Yeah. Yep. So that's huge. Some of the best covers around. For yeah. real, I'm very picky when it comes to like metal covers, especially when you go like non anywhere close to the genre really that you're actually coming from or playing from, and or like or just like when hardcore bands go to like, the do like I don't know. Every time I'm, all I'm trying to say is every time I tried like listen to your solo, I never uh, your covers. I've never found myself thinking, oh, I wish they did this part this way, or I wish because like sometimes you hear like a hardcore cover of a pop song or just another metal song. And they like make it their own a little too much, or they just go about it in the wrong way. Yeah, it's basically they just wrote a song, and then they were like, "Oh, hey, we'll throw Britney Spears over this." Right. Yeah. yeah. Yep. But I always enjoyed all your covers. They're very super clean, and like they paid homage to the original track a lot without losing like your own personal spin on it, and like you know incorporating your sound into it. Well, our whole thing with like picking covers, it's it's funny, like. Uh, it's all stuff that I grew up with, like, listening to in high school. It's stuff that, like, influenced me. But also stuff that, like, you listen to it and the recording itself sounds kind of dated. And you you spent, like, 20 years listening to this one song. And you're, the entire time, you're like, I know what I want to do. Like, you're like, oh, I wish the band did that. Or I wish it hit like this. Or I wish that fucking guitar riff punched harder. Mm-hmm. And that's in your head for 20 years, and right. then you start a band, and in today's market, you have to do covers, you know, because, yeah. I mean, let's face facts, we're in the ADD generation, and, you know, people's attention spans are small, yeah. so. ADD generation and just the re, the resell of everything, like yeah. everything we consumed as children is being fed back to us, just being shipped back into our mouths. Yeah, so I keep it simple, you know, I'm a... I'm a man in my 30s, and, uh, you know, I just try to pick shit that dudes my age want to listen to and that they can show to, like, their nephew or their son. Right. It's clever, man. It's a good way to go about it. 
Yeah, it's a niche kind of thing. Yeah. Trust me, I, our producer tries to push her newer songs on us and stuff like that. And it's like, I don't want to fucking, I'm, I'm in my 30s. I don't want to cover Post Malone. <laughs> Post yeah, 20 all day. I would cover Post Malone all day. But yeah. I'm not going to do Post Malone better than Post Malone. Yeah, I'll cover, I'll cover Postal Service. Postal Service. There you go. <laughs> with the box That's where cutter. I'm at now. Yeah, with a box cutter. With a box cutter. Yep. I play the box cutter, and I'm about to cover fucking postal service in your home. And I'm waiting. <laughs> UPS better not start nothing. Don't yep. start nothing, won't be nothing. Yeah. You thought you were going to the diner with your kids, huh? I'm in your home, and I'm waiting, and I have a box cutter. <laughs> in the shadows, waiting for you to fall asleep. <laughs> I might not even do anything for 20 years, but every night when you <laughs> go to bed. <laughs> and you don't even murder to murder. You murder in the hopes that in 20 years someone will make a Netflix documentary about you. Yes, I'm only doing it for the clout. <laughs> I'm only murdering for the clout. It actually grosses me out. Like, it's the long game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's totally the long game. I'm not getting anything out of this no. right now. It's totally, it's, it's all labor. I'm chasing that Netflix doc. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm hoping someone catches on to what I did. Oh, it's genius. About 30 years from now. Yeah. That's why I leave semen at every yep. location. Yep, because I don't cause work. Because I want to. Yeah. Because <laughs> I have to. No, I don't know. I would, if I had to murder, I'm afraid that I have, like, serial killer in me. I've just never unleashed it. Yeah. Because, like, I have a horribly addictive personality and, like, mm-hmm. a compulsive personality. So, if I caught the rush of taking <laughs> a human being's life, I would get hooked on it. Yeah. But, like, and, like, Mel says... Like, my girlfriend, Melanie, he, he's a friend with my girlfriend. Um, she says, like, well, no, you hate gore and stuff. And, like, when you see, like, crazy gore in movies, you pass out and it makes you sick. I'm like, yeah, well, even Jeffrey Dahmer puked the first time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> puked. You always, like, it's like heroin. Fuck. I puked the first time I did heroin, too. And I did that for years. When do you think, how far into puking do you think he was like, I'm hungry. I should eat that, dude. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. What if it was just a reaction to how hungry you get from puking when you kill someone? Like, he didn't even have a taste for humans at the time. He's just like, fuck, I'm starving. What else? I can't go anywhere right now. I'm covered in blood. I'm Imagine that in the same week you learn not only do you have a taste for murder, but now you also have a taste for human meat. It's so much to take on. What a lifestyle change. Holy shit. Oh, my God. It's like overnight. <laughs> and you can never go back. <laughs> Started from the bottom. Now we're here. Yeah. Eating people. <laughs> yep. Oh, that's great. I still want to be a firefighter. I want to make a documentary on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. You used, to be, you used to want to be a firefighter? No, I'm just saying, like, just a serial killer, like, after they get addicted to killing and cannibalism, just thinking, like, fuck, where would, I, where did, I, where did it all go wrong? I used to want to be a firefighter. Volunteer. Volunteer firefighter. I'm not even talking FDNY. Like, I mean, Ted Bundy wanted to be a lawyer and actually went to law school. <clears throat> Imagine that. You're going to law school by day and at night. That's what he should have done. You're women in a parking lot. Yeah, he should have done that. He was, I mean, he, he well, did, he I guess did lose he, his only case. Right, that's true. He was bad at when it. When he represented himself as but a lawyer. But yeah, it's just you're fucking yourself every time you do that. Yeah, he couldn't get himself off the murder. It's, yeah, what I, what you learn from those that documentary, like the one, the most recent one that came out about him, is you just learn like how easy it used to be to kill someone. Like the golden age of murder is gone. It's so hard to get away with now. It's like... All you had to do was cross a state line. <laughs> yeah. Grow a mustache. Grow a mustache. <laughs> literally just grow. Change your name to Bill. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Fuck, man. Dude, dads dads back in like the 50s used to just go down the street and start a whole new family. No one fucking knew. He could have killed that whole family. No one would have ever mic. figured that out. There you go. Ooh. Um, yeah. 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 Sometimes I wonder, like, how long is life? Could I do that later if I wanted to, like, start a family? I'll start a family with Mel, and then I'll just have a secret life. I get a job where supposedly I travel. Look at Dennis Rader. Yeah. The BTK killer. He was a uh, pillar of the community. Oh, even John Wayne Gacy. Right. Start. You can start a family. He's, he's my least favorite, Gacy. God damn, he really bums me the fuck out. I do like the clown paintings. I do like the, I gotta say. He's the, interesting. But I really like the murderers who get into art later. <laughs> yeah, they weren't failed artists. They weren't failed artists. They were successful murderers, and that's what makes you take on art later. Uh, but but keep in mind, not only were they successful 
murderers, but they later on became successful painters because now they're fucking portrait. He was a successful well, rule, right? Yeah, because well, yeah, he blew yeah. up his artwork with the yeah. killing. Yeah, you got it's all about exposure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's nineteen seventies clout. Yeah. That'd be terrible if in court he was just like, honestly, I, this was, I hate this, I hated doing all this, and I just really wanted people to give a shit about my paintings when I died. <laughs> like Hitler, like Hitler was probably, if he's somewhere, and he's looking on. You mean Argentina? Well, right. Uh, Don't cry for him. Yeah. In Argentina. Yeah. <laughs> Hitler's out there just bootlegging. Uh, well, even portrait. if Argentina cries for you, Brazil will open you, welcome you with open arms. They Portraits love Nazis. Of there. German shepherds just on the side of the road, like buying mine paintings. <laughs> <laughs> it's insane. Um, fuck, I had something I was gonna say. I mean, I'm, a, I'm a Jew, but is it is it wrong to say like he was actually kind of good at painting? I never really checked out his stuff. It's kind of. I mean, like I you gotta, get, you're gonna get flagged for sure, but like. You should check it out. Is he's not a bad, not a bad painter. Yeah, get a VPN and start looking up Hitler's artwork. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the only way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but what if it's like really good and you want it like printed out? <laughs> I don't know, because I've seen art that's really good, and I didn't get it. I think I could pass. Yeah, but think about the rich history behind it. it makes that dog painting even more fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you have a Picasso, but, but did Picasso kill? Yeah. <laughs> what? Nine million Jews? Yeah, six million Jews. Was it six? I think it's six. That's I don't an know. I'm a terrible Jew. I always forget. I should know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's mm. going well so far. It is going well. <laughs> well, bad. no, now I'm just like off in my head thinking about killing people. I would totally get addicted to it, How and I wouldn't you know? turn back. I wouldn't turn back. I would always be. It's just like. It's just like anything else. Once you open your soul to a like a reference for joy and satisfaction that most people don't get. It's like heroin. Yeah. Once you shoot heroin, like, oh man, shooting heroin at twenty is like <laughs> fuck, dude. It fucks you forever because like I know. No matter what I do, if I become huge with this and I'm making fucking a hundred million dollars a year touring <laughs> and doing stand up comedy and fucking whoever I want because I've just like, I've lived the, I've done the perfect marriage. I've done mar- a, a perfect marriage with Melanie and she's just so happy and go off, go off, be a led. I know I would never, none of it would compare to just being in a fucking wah wah bathroom and just shooting <laughs> dope. Just nodding off on it's, the toilet. It, yeah, and it, oh, it sucks. <laughs> I really See, cheated myself at having the bathroom, a good time. You nod off in the back of that fucking place. Everywhere. Anywhere. Yeah. Everywhere is a nap. Yeah. It's like it's like being a cat. You shoot up heroin, you can take a nap anywhere you want. You're yeah. the most comfortable you've ever been in your whole fucking life. It's yeah. like a warm security blanket wrapped around you where you're completely content about death. Oh, man, yeah. They say it's like being back in your mother's womb. I can That's imagine. That's what the feeling is. Is like. I don't remember that feeling. <laughs> I don't yeah. feel like I was ever inside of my mom's pussy. I feel like I remember for sure being in my dad's balls. Yeah. But I don't remember being in my mom's what pussy at all. Ride. Yeah. I knew where the fuck I was then. I still remember the screams. <laughs> <laughs> I grew nails today, so I started clawing. <laughs> but, um, yeah. I need water. Is that how the diary of Anne Frank started? <laughs> in the womb the first hideout I don't want to keep hammering the holocaust humor too hard <laughs> cause I already look the way I do I gotta be very careful about how I approach all that <laughs> like stuff Hitler's wet dream yeah look like a eugenics experiment yeah. I used to at least now I just look like um <laughs> like a not like a hit like a Hitler youth that like broke his leg in basic training and got you, sent home you look like a Hitler youth that was part of the lacrosse camp Nazi Germany. Yeah, I was a member of the Hitler Youth lacrosse team. <laughs> For Hitler Youth Sports. <laughs> yeah. Total bro. Hey, but, it's, um, it's Brian. It's, yeah, total Brian. Brian. Yeah, total Brian. Um, I'm a Brian, yeah. Oh. Box cutter. So that'd be the weapon of choice. Probably not. It's just what I have. Oh. Are we at 
get the London broil. You have to sing a hardcore story. song about London broil right now. <laughs> oh my god. I'll do the levels. Give it your best. Here we go. I got a Grammy that can't be beat! No other taste will satisfy me! There's only one me that I desire! What more did Brian before I expire? London Brian! <laughs> London Broil! Public Sally made it full of shit! London Broil! Boring head! London Broil! London Broil! The team would think it's planned at best! London Broil! London Broil! Cut me up the cup that I require! London Broil set my world on fire! <laughs> Where the fuck's it at? I got a box cut in! Money Broil! Where the fuck did my parents get this cut of me? Never, 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 hey, Money Broil! Right now, motherfucker, I want you to be honest with me! <laughs> Pretty good. Can I give it a try? Yeah. I want to I I hear you spit some bars on that one. I don't want to have the box cutter out because I might get too animated. It was and... very set your goals of uh, your part. Thank you. Yeah, I like it. I'm, really I'm afraid to yell. I should draw. I could maybe do a little. It's been a long time since I've done throats. Uh oh. Yeah, motherfuckers! Problematic podcast in the bitch front to front to side to side. Let's. Hold on, let me try it again. I wasn't. You got a leg. That's right, motherfuckers. Problematic podcast in the motherfucking ass. Move front to back and side to side. I want to say some shit. Where the fuck is the London Royal at? Let's go. Where the fuck is that cut of me? My mom always makes it, it's so neat It's not fatty, it's lean as fuck But the Royal, I'm out of luck Cause I can't find it in any Can't find it in any aisle I'm not, I want the London Royal Give it to me now, in the parking lot With a box cutter what were those fucking words I heard you utter? I want that special kind of meat! You know how much I fucking love me! Fuck you! Suck my dick! London Royal! Serve it up quick! I want it pink! I want it raw! And when I eat it, I want to be it all! Cause... Problematic podcast. Very happy on. Very happy to have you on, AJ. This is fun. Suck my dick and give me London boy a right there. What else you do with the motherfucking face? I want London Royal right now! That was fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be hurting tomorrow. You do that all the time. I haven't done that in about 10 years. Huh. I broke my box cutter. I snapped it in half. I got so fucking hyped. I can't handle it. The two step, it just moves through me. This is the rhythm of the night. Yeah. Of the night.
God damn, I've never had a musical bit like just. No, I'm just. I got nothing left. I got hyped up. Thinking about that fucking London Broil got me sweaty. Yeah. Let's, or was it the let's murder? Let's get the levels right again. <laughs> Go ahead, talk. Ha. Ha ba ba ba. Probably from the distance I'm going to actually speak. Yeah, I had to drop mine because this would catch everything. <laughs> All right. So we're back. So. Mmm. What do I want? Fuck, I keep doing this. What, what do I want to talk? What do I want to talk about? Um. So there's some fucking. <laughs> yep. There's some shit going on, man, huh? What about um this world? What about this shit going on in this world? You mean super COVID? Yeah. Round two? Everything. I can't wait. I'm gonna wear three masks. <laughs> are you are you sitting on are you back on Facebook yet? No, I can't get in. Everybody, I sent them my fucking Everybody is a stockbroker right now. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> my entire Instagram <clears throat> is COVID and and, and literally like, dude, you should be investing in Sendel. God damn. Yeah. And I'm I, like, fuck. I can't even log into my Robinhood app. I forget about how much stupid shit I miss out on. Oh, you miss Well, I'm just not seeing, but it's fine. I didn't really want to see it anymore. And more so, I just hated the person that Facebook made me into. Because if I could just type <laughs> as much as I want, that's a problem. Like, so. Yeah, but you just got blue light glasses, so you should be good to go. Yeah, I should put those back on. Now it's time to get serious. I want to talk about what's going on in the world. These are my woke glasses. Just please. It's time for everybody out there. I look like Henry Cejudo's corner up. coach. I look like uh, Neil Brennan. <sighs> but these are Mel's, and she's never had to rely on glasses for sight, so she just picks them up by the lenses. Yeah, it's perfect. And they're covered in rat grease. <laughs> My little rat fingers. Um, so yeah, there's, um, you ever heard of politics? <laughs> What's that? Damn, I'd be, it's, it's some moving shit. Oh, I love politics. I love, talk about a warm blanket. I love just cuddling up, just digging into politics. So what's got you uh, set off right now? Um, hmm. what doesn't have me set off? I'm a fucking. Let's, let me ask. I got you. a real short fuse when it comes to the issues. Let me ask you a Fuck. question. Let me ask you an honest. Go question. ahead. What's going to make the most postable thing for you to make this the main, main clip? <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to pick you up better because I want to hear your voice better. Can you move Hi. in on the mic more? Yeah. There you go. Probably right there. Yeah, Woo. that's good. That's hot, baby. That is hot. Yeah, there you go. You're coming in real clear. Ooh, hot potato. That sounds really good. Ooh. Hot. Ooh. 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 S Sibilance. Fuck, man. That's a good voice. <sighs> uh, warm. Shit. Shit. <laughs> Politics. I wish I could fight anyone. Then I would just... Oh, man. If I was tough as fuck, like if I was a trained <laughs> fighter, I would just be in the grocery store just like dogs. Dogs sneezing at people. <laughs> <laughs> Just like blowing snot all over my face, just like getting in someone's face. Just like face. DMX after an entire bag of coke. Yeah, that's yeah. Oh man, you want to talk about lifetime revelations? When I found out that DMX was on crack cocaine for his entire career, that blew me the fuck away. He has asthma too. Of course he does. Anyone has <laughs> asthma after smoking crack for twenty five years. Is that how I got asthma? You must have. Yeah. I <laughs> think you? that's the only way anyone gets Wait. asthma. That's why my mom had such bad asthma. She's a crack smoker. <laughs> Did you hear? She wasn't. Did you hear how? Uh, did you hear about one of his arrests? You want to hear the greatest DMX story ever? Yes. So, th I think this is like around the time that he did that movie with uh, Steven Seagal. He got arrested for uh, crack possession. Like he had a fucking ton of crack on him. Mm -hmm. So I think the story goes that uh, he was driving recklessly in. Uh, uh, in a suburban SUV, mm -hmm. right, and got pulled over by the by the cops, and he got out of the car. I got out of the car, and he was trying to tell them he was FBI. <laughs> oh yeah, I have heard a little bit about this. Yeah, like they don't like he didn't get out of the car, and they didn't go. You're fucking DMX, it's and he's over there yeah. like, oh, oh, oh FBI. No, I, I sound like everybody. <laughs> I'm delivering this coat to the FBI. <laughs> yeah, man, this is actually this is actually uh, Officer David Willis of the FBI. 
Federal Bureau of Investigation. <laughs> It's the he, dog, man. Oh, he fuck. Has, I said it's the dog. Oh, it's the I dog. I blew my... I blew, <coughs> I blew my... It's the dog, man. Oh. Fuck. I'm fucked. I just assume he... I gotta stop there. knocking these says. table out. I'm getting making me so mad. I gotta keep it here. <laughs> I love I love DMX so much. Oh, DM, yeah. He's one of my personal heroes. Especially after I found out that he fueled his, co- his career with crack. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, that's amazing. It's a miracle. That's like my kind of fairy tale. I'm trying to push for us to cover uh, Up In Here. Just because I think that song would be so live as a metal song. It could be. Yeah, that's a challenge. Yeah. That's tough. You got to be <laughs> clever with that one. Because people would be so offended if it was bad. Oh, it, it, well, that's the whole thing. It can't be bad. Yeah. It can't. I, I, I've literally been thinking about it for 20 fucking years. I, I, I know what I want to do. It's just convincing the other guys to fucking go for it. Yeah. That, that beginning of that song, that... I would hate to have to decide how I was going to do that on guitar. Yeah, I don't know. They're like palm mute chords, like like mid fret chords. You got the you have to go for those terror chords there. <laughs> Dude, in your mind, tell me that doesn't sound no, like the I, best. No, I love cover. the idea. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to be. I just want to be in the booth with the headphones on. Like one more time. Suck my dick. That's gonna be a tough one to do vocally. Oh, no, it's not. No? <laughs> no. Damn. I got it. I wouldn't be able to do that. I'm shit, though. Oh, I love it. I huh. want to do it so bad. And, in fact, on that, that's, I'm going to say this. There will be a Werewolves DMX cover of Up In Here at some point. Okay. You've heard it here, for folks. You've heard... <laughs> forks? <laughs> you've, you've heard it here, Forks. I got my box cutter. <laughs> you've heard it here, Forks. Uh, the Werewolves will be releasing one day a cover of the... Hit song by Dark Man X. Up in here. Paid for by crack. Yep. Marcy Zone. Marcy Project Zone. Marcy Project Zone DMX. Yep. FBI agent DMX. I think. I hope I'm not wrong about that. I'm going to get one of my fucking hood passes taken. I got like two oh, Marcy Projects? Yeah, I think I, I, I have a feeling that I might have misspoke on that. I think he's from Marcy nah, Projects. Look it up. Yeah. Now we have to. <clears throat> it's the dog. <laughs> Fact checking live on air. Duh, this is <laughs> Officer David Willis of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Yeah. <laughs> Can you just imagine, dude? Just imagine, just imagine you're an actual FBI agent. Like you went through the training, you've been in the game like 15 years, and you and grew you... up wanting to be DMX, and then here he is impersonating in person. you. <laughs> <laughs> so you basically let him go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you get a pass. Yeah, there's no way I would book DMX. No way. Mercy Projects. Is it wrong? Uh, rapper DMX. I'm on his IMDb. Hope I wasn't. Or I mean, his, uh, his Wikipedia. I feel kind of sick to my stomach right now. <laughs> I know. I'm, I'm Again, I might have mis- just misspoke and talked early out life. about Dark Man X. He's from Mount Vernon, New York. Oh, that's not uh, Marcy. Bronchial asthma. Yes, I was right about the asthma. Did he grow up at all in Marcy Projects? I'm looking for Why it. am I thinking that? I'm not seeing Marcy I'm such a Projects. Fuck. I'm not going to sleep a wink. 18 months, New York. Won't sleep a wink, folks. I am not seeing Marcy Projects anywhere. My credibility has totally been destroyed. Yeah. <laughs> Where did DMX grow up? Yonkers, New York. I was going to say Yonkers, because I know he filmed Where the Hood At in Yonkers. Yeah. Because my friend Eric, um, easy. He's from Yonkers. And Who's from the Marcy the, Projects? I feel like that's in a... That's in there's got to be plenty of rappers from... A couple rappers from Marcy Projects. But, yeah, Yonkers. Well, yeah, because he filmed Where the Hood At in Yonkers, and that's where he's from. And my friend Eric, growing up, I think was, like, in the video, like, holding up a sign. I mean, this goes to... You're putting this on Instagram, or... I mean, on... Uh, it's going everywhere. I mean, YouTube? It's going on Breitbart. First and foremost, going on Breitbart. And then... <laughs> No, it's uh, just YouTube right now. Okay, good, good. Yeah. Someone in the comments, if you've made it this far, please 
by all means let us know please if he if he if i'm wrong I, i'm i'm looking i'm seeing no marcy projects i don't think but i wrong. feel like it's in a song i think i was wrong and i'm a dumb asshole fuck is from the marcy projects can you tell us can you tell us what rappers are from the marcy projects yes right in right in p.o box six twenty six 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 four twenty sixty nine sixty nine sixty nine sixty nine Y'all go make me lose my mind. 69. 69. Tell me if he's from Y'all Marcy Y'all make me Projects. go ass to mouth. 69. 69. Y'all gonna make me suck a dick. 72. 72. <laughs> That's just a guess. <laughs> Sucking each other's dicks. Yeah. I just do... uh. That's how I'll honor DMX. <laughs> to One DMX. Day when I got the reach, I'll just start making like a series of covers of DMX songs where I make every, it all about being gay. And that's what we're going to sure do. I'm sure you would love that. We're going to revive his career. And it's Dick Man X. <laughs> it would still be X going to give it to you. Yeah, it's still just DMX. rectally. <laughs> he's going to give it to you. Yeah, he's gonna I'm get- topping tonight. Uh, uh. But usually the dog, the, <laughs> the cum dog, you know. Gay dog. Usually, usually I'm a bottom Because I'm so dominant out in the streets That I gotta be dominated in the sheets you know Started from the bottom Now I'm here <laughs> That's a Drake remix Yep Just make yeah That's I don't know why that hasn't been done Why haven't Someone hasn't blown up With just gay covers of Famous rap songs I mean Great I mean I could do it But I'm not gay So I feel like that's just appropriate That's co op and Kind of makes you want to just go out and be gay for like a little while, just so you can blow up. And just be gay. And then have that scandal come out that you're straight. Gay for the clout. Yeah. Gay for the clout. Yeah. There's a lot of dude in, dudes in gay porn that are gay for the clout. And the, and the cash. It's a lot of money. A lot of money to be made in gay porn. Yeah. That's what they say. But how think much money this. is there really? I mean, think about the, tat- the numbing cream you put on your uh, tattoos. Mm hmm. I think about, that's mostly what I'm thinking about all the time. Numbing cream. And I haven't gotten a tattoo in years, but I'm always thinking about numbing cream. Fat checks, if you could just reapply that numbing cream. Take yourself to a dark place, happy place, close your eyes, ride the lightning. I mean, the upside, though, of not being gay and doing gay porn is that you don't ruin sex for yourself in your personal life. Yeah. No. Because that's what you hear about a lot with like porn stars, right? Unless it's like a Jeffrey Dahmer situation. <laughs> Well, it's always going to be a little bit of a Jeffrey Dahmer situation. Yeah, you're like, now I'm gay. Now I have to eat this guy. Yeah. How do I make this about murder? I feel like that's the reoccurring theme of this episode. Yeah. Yeah. Box Just get sick of killing on stage. Do that for 80 years. I plan on doing stand-up for about 80 more years. And then... um just move into serial killing. Here's my question. With all the touring bands from like the 70s and touring comedians from the 70s and 80s, how are there not more comedian rock star murders? You know, know. easy would be state to state. Maybe there are. State to state. They just, they're successful. They've gotten away with it. Yep. That's how good they are. Yeah. Later on, you come to find out that like Jimmy Page has just been fucking ganking people for years. Right. I mean, it's tough to cover up a murder by yourself. Sam Kinison's been strangling children. Well, he's dead. Yeah. But what maybe he was, and that's why. But someone, now you know. someone got him. Um, someone got their revenge on him. Yeah. Got okay, I'll, I'll roll with that. Sam Kinison was a murderer. He yep. was a. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Kinison was a serial killer, and that's why he died. He wasn't. <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> oh! 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 Yeah. Now he couldn't get away with that. He'd have to scream. <laughs> yeah. You have to do it somewhere so remote. So <laughs> he has a soundproof, a soundproof room where he just kidnaps runaways. Yeah, just in, ah, up in Alaska. Oh, 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 oh. You do this. You do that yell much better than me. <laughs> oh, oh, That's very oh. good. I can do a good Kinnison. I love him. Or I might have just blown my voice out already, and I can't yell anymore. That's why you gotta warm up. Yeah, it's so important. I was planning on just doing a high voice the yeah, whole I time. Wanna, I didn't want to have to sit in my car for twenty minutes outside here. Uh, your place warming you were, up. You were wise for doing I that. I had to. Mm-hmm. Gotta do that. Get that. What if I just started pissing? 
<laughs> well, down. I'd hope it was framed in I the shot because you don't want to miss that piss. I wasn't even upset. I just looked down. Was... <laughs> yeah, the puddle podcast. You just piss in the middle of it. Every episode. The puddle. Yeah. You just the never know when cast. it's coming. You just have to wait. The puddle pod. <laughs> yeah. Fuck. That's gonna be the backup name. If there I ever. Go. I like problematics, but I just the get sick pod, of everything dude. so quick. And think about the niche. Like, you don't pick a specific time you piss your pants during the podcast. And that's the thing. It could it could be the first ten minutes. We got to stay up on the mic. Sorry. I'm afraid the audio is going to be bad this episode. It could be, we got to keep talking and get crisp conversation so I could edit it all together. <laughs> Perfect. It could be at the beginning of the podcast. Yeah. It could be in the middle. It could be at the end. You never know when you're going to piss. But that's the thing. The audience is like they're waiting for that face where you're just like super, super zoned and you're just going for it. Yeah. I'm in the middle of a guest talking. They know when it's coming. They know. They come to love it. Yeah, they <laughs> They get so excited when they see a certain, like, look wash over my face. Yeah, like one eyebrow there. raises And, like, slightly. they can kind of tell that I'm not really listening to what you're saying anymore. <laughs> and now, you're in a hole. And I'm accessing something. You're singing Disney songs. And my one eye starts to twitch. Oh, no. And then I scratch my face. I scratch my right temple. And then I look down. And that's when they know. That's when they know the piss is coming. It's filling up my pants. <laughs> and um, Dan, Dan, baby Dan's good old, good old and warm and damp down there now. He's got a big old puddle. And now the puddle cast has officially begun. And Dan's done talking. So now it's all on because he can't talk. I'm, in, I'm basically incapacitated um, after I let out that much piss into my own pants. And I just really, you know, like um, when you would do opiates, you don't want someone to fuck with your nod. It's mm-hmm. basically that. Like, I have the piss in my pants now, and I just want you to give me a cigarette and just let me <laughs> have relax. Have you done opiates? Because no one can fuck with your nod. <laughs> no, but but I mean, like, if someone tries to wake you up or something, like, yo, yo, and you're like, what? Uh, and you come, um, <laughs> what? I remember I had this friend, Al, who, like, that's fucked up that I said his name. <laughs> But he would, yeah, he would get so, oh man, he would get all fucked up on smack, and he was like known for like coming out and going, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? And then like I was trying to go back and like, <laughs> try to talk to him. <laughs> yeah, one time I got, um, he was so fucked up, knotted out, I took my pants off, and like I was just sitting on his lap for like 15 minutes and just having everyone take <laughs> pictures of me, and like I'm just like this. And he was just out. Yeah, he was just knotted the fuck out. But really, we were all just jealous because none of us were nodding anymore because we were just junkies. Yeah. <laughs> and Look he was it. just a young kid fucking his life up. <laughs> he was in the early stages of completely burning his life to the ground and we were Look, jealous. Lucky so I had to bully him in the, in the crack house. Yeah. I always liked speedballing. Oh, fuck. We're going to talk about this? I got someone to talk I about mean, this with. In a, yeah. Speedballing was always a fun thing. Dude. I don't know. Because like, I felt like you still got... You still got that like euphoria, but at the same time, you got shit done. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, I don't know the what I got out of it. The way I always explain speedballs, and like I've tried to like I talk about that stuff. I got jokes about this stuff on stage that I tell, but I'm never really like. I basically like say that like you know like shooting a speedball, heroin and cocaine. It's like having heroin was my wife and cocaine was my man. So it's like having my hair like. Well, I wonder what that feels like. People like ask, like, what does that feel like? I'm, I'm doing the bit now, but like, I'm, I'm like, well, basically exactly what you would imagine putting your wife and your side chick at the same room, in the same room at the same time would feel like all of a sudden to their surprise. And like, you know, you're just kind of fighting hoping, for who gets You're more hoping attention. they just want to make out and like start a threesome and you're hoping that they don't work together to kill you <laughs> like once and for all and just stop the abuse. And, um, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> That is the best description. Yeah, but well, yeah, because that's what the high of it was for me. Like the first time I did one, I was like, I was like, oh, this is for sure. This is like I fucked up. This is for sure how I'm, I'm about to die right that now. That is literally how I worked it off the hookah. Yeah. That and MDMA. Damn. Whoo! There's nothing like working in a club doing bottle service, and you're on MDMA. Yeah, I could imagine. And I always, then you go yeah. out after, and you speedball. Woo! Yeah. I wish I had gotten into like working in bars and stuff when I was on drugs, but I didn't. I was it's the best it. way to be a functional drug addict. Yeah. Because you get shit done, you get money in your pocket, you get more drugs. Yeah. 
whatever happened happened and i'm alive Mm -hmm. i was lucky that like on the upside i was lucky that like i had like music and shit and like because like most of the time when i was fucked up i just wanted to be in my basement at my parents house just completely alone with the lights off just figuring out composing and producing music so like if i didn't have that i'd probably be dead there's a i mean the at least the chances are much much greater that i'd be dead or just in prison right now for some stupid shit that i got caught doing i mean that's why all of motley crew is still here right yeah not one dead member yeah. can you believe that nikki six overdosed like what four times four times yeah died four times <sighs> still here do you ever have a hospitalized overdose no no i got lucky i never got hospitalized but i for sure overdosed like once or twice i for sure overdosed twice maybe i had like one or two other like but yeah see i was i was i was a uh, mm. um, I was like i was one of those kind of addicts where i like to kind of spread it out right you know like i wasn't just on one at one time i would i would jump around to different phases true yeah well yeah you're a chemist yeah you're I'm always a chemist. trying to uh chemically engineer your every moment so like you yeah. just check you're constantly checking in how am i feeling am i you lethargic got or am i like antsy and like need to come down and that's what you're constantly mm-hmm. doing you're like do I want to get more creative? What can I take to get more creative right now? And then like, do I get a few days off? Yeah. Heroin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do I got to go back to work? Cocaine. Yep, coming off of, yeah, you come yeah. off a binge of smoking crack, and you're like, yeah. okay, I'm just going to relax and just shoot dope for a couple of days and have take you, some Xanax. Have you ever smoked crack? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. What kind of, let me ask you a question, because everybody I know who's ever smoked crack has had two different experiences, and it's always these exact two different experiences. You either get that euphoric, like, you could just sit here and nothing fucking matter. Nothing fucking matters in the universe. Mm-hmm. Or you get the super paranoid that you think like cops are going to show up at any moment. Um, which, which kind of crack did you have? Cause my buddy and I, think I the, the first time I, the first like two times I smoked crack, I liked it. I thought it was cool. I was mm-hmm. like, fuck, this is like stronger Coke because I hadn't shot Coke yet. Yeah. And then <laughs> I game changer. Honestly, I'd rather shoot coke. Oh, this is terrible. I, oh, this is such scumbag talk. But fuck it. Well, I'm we're good fucking company. sober. Yeah, we we're can good talk now. about this. We're good now. We're good now. Yeah. So fuck it. Um, I found personally, I found that shooting coke is much better than smoking crack. And shooting crack is a waste. Crack is for smoking. Smoke the crack. If you have crack, <laughs> smoke it. If you got it, smoke it. But if you have coke and you're blowing it and like you're already at the level where like if you're honest with yourself you're like i'm a complete degenerate (laughs) junkie piece of shit who's trying to get the ultimate rush possible only and i don't give a fuck what i have to do to do it shoot your coke why are you still blowing coke like if you're if you're really that addicted to like the rush and the feeling of cocaine shoot it god damn it It, that's what it's there for it dissolves in water don't blow your nose out you got a lighter how 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 long how do you how long do you care that how long that needle's been laying there <laughs> yeah come on stop it just burn it grow up yeah grow up start shooting your drugs <laughs> yeah but um yeah um but then yeah i i shot coke much more than i smoked crack but i definitely had many notable crack smoking experiences where it was fun at first and the, but like the biggest thing with cocaine and uppers in general is just like but definitely cocaine is just like you're only high on it when you have more yeah that last shot you don't enjoy that shit because like the second the, the the bell stop ringing in your fucking ears you're like okay gotta go get more right now there was one time that i did so i was working i was working at this uh bar downtown right and there was this like surgeon guy that i was friends with and uh so one night i'm just like hanging out and he pulls out like a fat bag of cocaine and he's like, he's like, hey, you want? And I'm like, absolutely. And you know, there's junk cocaine out there, so you're just like, oh, if I do a bunch of it, I'll feel good, right? Yeah. So I did a bunch of his, and I was a fucking hummingbird because I didn't realize that this fucking oh, doctor some, like, got yeah, yeah, the yeah. best yeah, yeah, coke yeah, on the planet. He had doctor coke. <laughs> I had never done doctor coke. Damn. Like went to medical school, made a bunch of money, and now I buy pure yeah, yeah. wonderful fucking cocaine get that he i walked out of the bathroom he looked at me and he went you did a lot yeah. and i was like what do you mean <laughs> yeah. He, he's, yeah bro he's out there he's like he's telling his friend go go get him some water he's feeling my pulse he's like how are you feeling right now i'm like i don't know i feel like i'm about to time travel that's what's up though 
Yeah, I, I, mean, got, I wish I had doctors to hang out. It with was when the I was only t- time that I was like, I'm done doing coke for the evening. I'm done for the evening. That's pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I felt like whatever Scott Bakula had to feel like right before he was about to quantum leap. Oh shit! Yeah. It was that moment right before Good Sam. Good reference. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, just that like i was about i don't know what's gonna happen but i'm uh, all of a sudden being like an 18 19 like barber's body mm. but at the end though and especially like the uh, i had a couple relapses like in the early days of like living here um where i'd go back and like when i i be, oh you relapsed in florida <laughs> <laughs> no i'm saying going back to jersey oh, like okay. i would go back and hang there and i've never done any of the hard stuff down here like never gone and went so and bought hard, hard drugs off the street or anything like that and i'm so lucky um yeah, but um this is like the rehab capital yeah i just never wanted to i'm lucky i've never broken that membrane here um but um i had a couple bad relapses though like going back and like especially like the last time um i went back to the house i grew up in and my dad was selling the house Oof. Oof, that was a vicious, horrifying reef. Because I had just gotten paid like two grand from a sales job I had just gotten laid off of. So I got my commission check and went up there with all that money and bro, just eight days of insanity, man. I like, shut myself not, down. Like not fun. Like I'm it just like to the point where I was just a demon, dude. Like just driving down Highway 36 at like three in the morning mm-hmm. and just hearing voices slamming on my brakes barely pulling over to the side of the road and like just examining the outside of the car i'm like what the fuck is saying who, who the fuck is saying that who's so talking like, like who is and just oh man basically you were violent my, violet my regard uh when she gets the uh, golden ticket in willy wonka and just goes ape shit in there and he just sit back looking yes at her but like, on, yeah but on a speedball <laughs> like, but like yeah but like not a god stopper speedball yeah, yeah man yeah speedball is terrifying like just like i was like Oh, the high is that like you are convinced you're about to die and you couldn't be more excited about it. Like that's what it feels like. I was like, oh man, my heart is gonna stop. Like no way is my heart gonna keep be- like you just feeling it. And like no exaggeration, you hear someone's heart beating when you're standing next to them. And, oh man. So if for just a moment, you understand how ACDC writes songs. For just that one moment in time. <laughs> yeah, you get it. Yeah, and that's what, and back to what it all, back to where this all came from is like, yeah, because of that now, my reference for joy and satisfaction is completely fucked, and I'm hoping it recovers one day because I just keep doing things and I just keep doing them, and nothing's like, nothing is is close to giving me the feeling as what just that was, and that's why drugs are fucking evil because it's just synthetic greatness. It's just the, but it's better than that. It's like. Doing that shit is stronger than the strongest high you could experience of like, I imagine like accomplishment and like just moving, navigating the world. Because I've heard from really successful rich people that got sober and used to sh- like shoot dope or anything. They're like, yeah, it's kind of sad. It doesn't compare. Mm-hmm. But like I did my best and like I turned this addictive impulse into success. And that's the thing but- too. That's what separates us from a lot of people is that that addictive mentality that you have the 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 need to like turn to drugs to because think about like how much networking you had to do as a fucking drug addict just so you could score yeah now you take that energy that you had and now you put that into this one see like you can turn anything this is the thing i try to tell a lot of people about like like with your dreams and stuff like that like anybody out there who like for me for example like with the band um the reason i'm able to pull off all the shit that i pull off is is because i have this drug addict mentality of like i'll hit every single person up that i can Mm -hmm. if they have something that i need to borrow to use for a music video or a song or anything like that and i will i will be fucking relentless about it or like just hitting up old contacts just anybody that you can and you're sitting there just hammering away all day and that's the thing like your grind like you sitting here making music or doing this podcast or leaving to go uh do a stand-up set to come back to work on more shit yeah it's that just it's that that impulsive need that you can't slow down yeah and i love it when i'm using it right but like yeah with that comes so much bullshit man like sometimes like 
this uh this is like just uh success is like heroin sounds, you're chasing the same dragon yeah yeah but like just all, like because like what that really comes from is like some sort of kind of, like some sort of imbalance in our personality like well, because yeah. like you have to like that's what like because like Mel is like a very balanced, like calculating, right brain sort of person. Like, and she doesn't. Yeah, so really, is my wife. That's great, and yeah. it's good that we found women like that. But she just doesn't understand. Like, why does everything have to be like so extreme? Why does it have to be like you have to be so fucking balls deep in everything? <laughs> and I'm like, well, because that's just the way it works. If you want to have extraordinary results, you have to put in extraordinary measures. And like, I it don't can't know be a how else to be. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, I can't be anywhere, anywhere else. But like, just I don't know. And this is just such a woe is me, like white dude, like middle, like just suburban shit to say, but like. I just really wish I wasn't like a fucking artist sometimes, man. Like I really wish I was just like a pragmatist and like kind of just like a more even keel guy. My emotions weren't always all over the place and I didn't feel everything so deeply and have to make art and express hey. myself all the time. And like, fuck dude, it's so exhausting. Like the personality type that that- Now you understand why we were fucking drug addicts. Yeah, man. Cause like, you can't, yeah, because just like, turning this off that's what it is. It's yeah, impossible. It's like, there's this fucking fire that's burning in you all the time, mm -hmm. and like it just needs it's just taking, like it's just always taking. It's just the void, it's just sucking. My everything. back is sweaty thinking about it right now, yeah, man. And it's crazy because, like, as soon as we're done with this, I'm gonna be on my phone, like, doing work for, for my band because yeah. I have to, and I'll be up as late as I'll be up. I wrote, uh, when we were, when you sent me that track, I started working on the those lyrics. I woke up at like three o'clock in the morning and I turned my phone and was like, oh, I started writing them out. <laughs> and then I'm like, I laughed and I was like, Dan, I like this. <laughs> and I was out. <laughs> yeah. Because that's what it is. Like most of the songs on our album uh, that's coming out, I, I would wake up in the middle of the night, go to take a shit and I'd write the entire fucking verse. Because That's the way all happens, day long, though. I'm obsessively like, why, why, why have you not figured this out yet? Why is this not done? You need to get this done. Yeah. You need, you have, well, you, you, you're good you at this. You should know how to do this. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, I got to rest. And then you lay down in the middle of the night, you wake up, inspiration hits. And right. people don't get that. When that inspiration spark hits, if you don't fucking you get out of bed it. and do it, yeah. it's gone yeah. forever. Yeah, yeah. And the rest of the time you're walking around going, Fuck. And that's all we're worth. You that's know? it. Like, that's <laughs> so it. like we have to. Yeah, that's the thing about it. Like when I, whenever like, because I I struggle because like I'm a comic. Like I have like a, I'm like a, like a stand up's personality, but I'm also like a really like artsy weird dude. And like I want to like belong to like a collective and like an artist community. Like the idea of that is so beautiful to me. But also I, I want to be the guy in the artist community shitting on it all the time. And like yo. You're also fucking retarded. Like, this is so lame the way we're acting. But I want that support, too. And I want it to, be, like, so. Um, but I don't know. Sometimes I just, I catch myself speaking or, like, the things I'm saying in a way. I'm like, fuck, man, I'm so pretentious. But I kind of, like, I'm beginning, the older I get, the more I reconcile. It's just, like, you kind of have to, it's just part of the deal sometimes. Like, if you have to act as though. You have to act in any way you need to act. You need to like express yourself in any way you need to act in order to put out the best fucking content and art you can. I feel like so uh, in, if you need when, to lean into some kind of artistic character or something, then you just do it. Well, that's the thing. I, f I, I find that like working with people who are not in the uh, art artistic or uh, in entertainment that are not necessarily musicians for me brings out so many fucking musical ideas mm -hmm. or you know. Yeah, the ideas for like when I'm hanging out with film people and they remind me of something and I'm like, oh fuck, I gotta watch that. That'll that'll spark lyrics for a song yeah. or that'll spark like an idea for a music. That's video. the truth. Yeah, when you're around other mediums, and that's what that's the kind of collective you have to bring around. Right. Like, think about this. Think about when you were like a, a fucking drug addict and like the random characters you would hang out with. Mm -hmm. You know, your collective kind of has to be like that in entertainment. You have to kind of pull together a bunch of people that will fire that uh, neuron in your brain that you wouldn't have thought of and then you go down that rabbit hole and you're like thanks I'll be right back and right. have that person understand like ah you're in the groove you gotta go do your thing yeah yeah I love that you don't have friends like that because I, people just don't understand they'll look at you they'll laugh at you but when you're like and you're you're there whether it be working on a joke or working on like a song yeah. 
when that moment hits, they just don't understand it. But then you come off awkward and weird to mm-hmm. them. And it's like, no, you don't understand. I'm on this thing. I'm in this fucking pool right now. Yeah. And if I don't start paddling, I'm going to drown. Yeah, yeah. Call it whatever you want. Inspiration, yeah. mania, <laughs> whatever it is. Sometimes it feels like mania. It's both. <laughs> when me. you get that, like, pace. Yeah, dude. Yeah, I've had so many weird moments with Mel where she just comes up, like, trying to talk to me when I'm in the middle of, like, working on something. It's like, ah! <laughs> like, it's just, come up and say something. Like, what? What? <laughs> like, <laughs> Have you had those moments? Babe, what do you want to eat? What the fuck? Where, where did you come from? Go! Leave! <laughs> and, like... <laughs> Have you had those? I love moments? you. I love you so much, and I'm so glad you're here. But go. I need to, like. I need to. I just need to do this. You know how I am. Like, it sucks. It sucks being that kind of guy. Like, it does, but it doesn't, because you know you're making something dope. Yeah, I love making. Dope That's shit. the worst. I just hope it pays off. I just want to be. Uh, are you? Do you ever feel? Do you ever feel validated? I wonder. Like, how validated do you really feel ever? No matter how much you make it. Nothing is ever good enough. <laughs> Of course, that's, that's what I'm a talking great, about. It's a great mentality to have. You're never going to feel accomplished. Yeah. That's why you'll never stop going after it. Because here's the thing. Like, okay, take, for example, uh, that, that down, uh, Disturb shouting out our Down With The Sickness cover, right? That was yesterday. Yeah. That's done. Yeah, you're already moving on. Now what? <laughs> yeah, you're moving on. Yeah. Where's the next big band that's going to shout out our cover? Yeah. Like, and that's, that's, all that's what I want. That's that was my heroin just now. Yeah. I, I, or my rail of coke. Yeah. I did it. I felt like a god. Now what? Yeah, time for another hit. Time for another hit. Yeah, it sucks, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't even enjoy that anymore. That's hell. I'm wearing the fucking shirt right now, but everybody's looking at me like, yo, bro, that was like yesterday. Like, relax. <laughs> <laughs> what now <laughs> yeah yeah that's the worst feeling and that's why you're pacing around at three o'clock in the morning going like and wrecked him damn near killed him yeah and you know what like the feeling of the feeling of like i don't know because the feeling of feeling like you have made progress or you are in a good place with what you're doing creatively or anything that's even more fleeting than just the feeling of inspiration. I get inspired to make shit way more than I get the feeling of like, yo, I'm the truth. Like you get those like <laughs> moments sometimes where like, yo, I'm the fucking truth. Like, I'm, oh man, I'm like, I'm gifted. This is great. Like I'm so lucky and I'm very, very grateful that like I have these skills and that things worked out this way for me. Like where I was able to be good at something because this is dope. And like, oh, I gotta, I, the future's, future's gonna be dope. I'm gonna fucking kill it and I'm gonna crush it. I'm gonna crush life. And then like you feel that like, it's like know. when you're mainlining Kanye West. Yeah. yeah. You feel that like, well, I guess with, the good thing about it is with stand-up, you get to feel it a decent amount. Because when you crush, you feel pretty goddamn good afterwards. Mm-hmm. So, I, you, but you've been a musician. You understand, like, when you crush live. Yeah. No, I, well, but I think you've had much better experiences playing shows than I probably You forget. Did. I had a I've couple good stand-up, ones. I've done stand-up, and I fucking, <laughs> I remember one night, uh, this was probably what ended up making me kind of put comedy on hold. <laughs> I was I, I played at Propaganda, and mm-hmm. I remember this exact thing. I thought like, all right, I'm not doing cocaine. I can I can take pre workout, yeah, right? Nice. I'll take pre workout. I'll have a couple drinks, loosen up, yeah, and I'll be great, That'll right? Be great. And keep in mind, what I had I had crushed like three three showcases in a row mm-hmm. and i was just so high on my own shit yep. the worst place yeah. to be in stand-up. and i was like i just want to be like fucking like super energetic so i took it took a couple shots by the time i went up i remember taking the microphone and then i just remember at one point i took my pants off on stage <laughs> and then one of the dudes who worked there just puts his arm around me and pulls me off stage <laughs> and he goes like all right guys i was Andrew the Ferio. <laughs> and i ended up in a dumpster out back crying because <laughs> <laughs> i was like i bombed so hard i don't even remember where am i someone please take me home <laughs> that is <laughs> I mega bombed. Do you understand that? I, That's awesome. I Hiroshima. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. I'm. A, I love bombing though. I love a good bomb. Like it sucks. It's the worst. It stings. It <laughs> destroys you. But I know that something good's coming because like every time I bomb, I become such a better comedian in the weeks after. Like I write. I I always get like 
at least one killer new bit out of a bomb. Well, it's because, like, a yeah. bomb will make you turn that amp to a fucking 11. Yeah, it just keeps you humble. And, like, I think especially... No, let's let's be honest. It doesn't just keep you humble. It keeps you up all Oh, yeah, night. it destroys you. It wrecks you. It destroys you. And that's the thing that people don't get. Bombing, whether it be in stand-up or on set, we've, we've had... Oh, my God. If you, if, if you come to a werewolf show and you'll never know when we bombed. Everybody will assume we did really well. But if if you do not see me at the end of the show, it's because so much bad shit happened on stage. Like our last show that we played, uh, our drummer forgot the chord for the backing track, so mm. we had none of the intros to any of the songs. And we don't yeah. use like a lot of vocals or anything in, in our stuff. It's mostly just like bass drops yeah, and yeah, yeah. introductions and stuff like that. And so I remember I'm in this thing going like, wow, for the first time, we're going to play these songs without fucking intros. We just have to click, click, go, and the room is packed. Yeah, yeah. And I just remember having that fucking, you know that feeling when you're bombing on stage and you know you still have so much time (laughs) and it's the longest five minutes set of your life? Yeah. Now imagine that for 30 minutes and you can't hear anything on stage because your sound guy fucking sucks. (laughs) (laughs) And so you're up there just going like, ah! I hope yeah. this is going well. Just wiggle like the wacky arm flailing inflatable tube man that you are and pray for the best. Then you get off stage covered in sweat. People want to talk to you and all you want to do is go slam your head into a fucking wall. Damn, son. Yeah, that sounds... I don't know. I had so many... Well, you're just playing music at like a higher level than I was when I was playing shows and shit. No, it's, so, no, matter, no matter whether you're playing... Like Madison Square Garden or a bad show is a bad show. At the end of the day, a bad show is a fucking horrible show. Probably the yeah. same for a comedian too. I think. Well, honestly, I found it to be worse. At least in my personal opinion, co- failing in comedy is worse because with music, I could like hide behind an instrument, or you're playing a. <clears throat> this is it, man. It sounds great. Oh, yeah, it sounds fucking great, dude. Are you good? Are you feeling all right? Ah, uh, no, it's good. I thought you guys take a monster shit. <sighs> yeah, man, bathroom's right down the hall. All right, plenty of toilet paper. I'm sorry, dude, I'll be right back. Give it to me! 